Video games have their own rules and restrictions, but for the most part, there are things that you can do in them that aren't possible in real life. And whether it makes sense or not, it's hard to resist. Let's take a look at 15 more things in video games that fall into this category of irrational action. Panic rolling. Rolling, especially in Souls games and Monster Hunter, isn't just a quick means of repositioning. It also provides invulnerability frames, allowing you to dodge attacks. Knowing the timing of attacks is still important though, so it's not odd to just keep rolling, 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 and hope you dodge an enemy's attack. It looks ridiculous and is no substitute for properly learning a boss's patterns. But on the other hand, when it works, it works. Going in guns blazing. Games that provide the option of stealth, like Dishonored, also allow you to murder anyone and everyone provided you're fine with the consequences. Of course, there are also titles like Wolfenstein The New Order, or even Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain where letting loose and gunning down everyone is a viable strategy, even if it means a tougher challenge. Sneaking around is fun, but so is throwing caution to the wind. Ramming into other cars. When playing Forza Horizon, you're encouraged to just run wild through the world, destroying anything and everything for XP. The problem arises when you're actually racing. As tempting as it can be to ram other cars, it can actually affect your performance in more realistic conditions. Bringing those habits into Forza Motorsport, which is even more realistic, is a bad idea. To say nothing of Gran Turismo 7 or GT Sport where you're penalized for the same when playing online. Try as we might though, it's pretty hard to avoid. Skipping through dialogue and tutorials. Listen, I'm sure the residents in Monster Hunter Rise's Kimura Village or Monster Hunter World's Astera and Seliana are nice people. But I don't care for their backstories and will simply skip through the dialogue and tutorials to get to the hunt. Tutorials are essential in many cases and skipping important dialogue can come back to bite you. And yet, there are times where you just like to skip the pleasantries. Killing all NPCs. Take when you've completed and finished every single side quest in Dark Souls 1 and collected everything, what more is there to do but kill everyone? It's not for the sake of a challenge, but simply to sate one's curiosity. Regardless of the game though, resisting the urge to kill every single NPC just to see what happens, or for the fun of it, is pretty tough as well. Finishers and Executions Executions, finishers, whatever you may call them, they're hard to resist. In many cases, it's justified. They're part of the gameplay loop and essential to either surviving or one-upping foes. In other cases, they're just a way to style on your opponents. After all, why go for an easy kill when you can make the other person feel bad? Earning the perfect ending Some games give you a choice between good and bad endings, oftentimes based on decisions made throughout your playthrough. The requirements aren't always insane, but even if they are, some of us won't be satisfied with anything less than a perfect ending. Fighting all of the optional bosses and super boss in Trials of Cold Steel 4 Making all of the right choices in Persona 5 Royal, maxing out the effective military strength in Mass Effect, doing all of the side quests in Yeez 8. The list goes on. Hoarding. This is more of a Minecraft and Terraria thing, but hoarders everywhere can pretty much sympathize. Picking up everything at Fallout 4, even the junk, which has some use, isn't necessary, but you do it anyway. I'd bet you've probably gone into console commands and increased the inventory weight limit to prevent encumbrance and further fuel your hoarding needs. Endlessly retrying against powerful bosses. Anyone who's fought the Gozuki in Neo 2 or even Fatalis in Monster Hunter World Iceborne will know what this feels like. Your gear is clearly not that great or you're at a low level. You could go and grind out some more quests, perhaps find better weapons and armor, or you could fight the boss one more time, swearing that this is the run. We have all been there, and as maddening as it is, 
we just can't resist. Playing ethically. There is the regular way to play games, and then there's the ethical way. For Elden Ring players, this means no bleed damage, techniques like Bloodhound Step, and so on. This is somewhat different from TA rules in Monster Hunter, which is more of a competition. No playing ethically is all about limiting yourself because otherwise the game would just be too easy. Why? To what end? Mostly for pride or because some mechanics are not intended despite clearly being in the game. Invading other players. If there's one thing that Soul Series has taught us, it's that invading other players is fun. It may seem a bit iffy at first, but once you've tasted first blood, whether by ganking some unsuspecting fool or outplaying them, it's hard to resist going forward. Elden Ring makes it even more tempting since killing the invaded will confer rune arcs, which are a great way to activate great runes early on in the game. Spamming I Need Healing after playing the Overwatch 2 closed beta, one thing I've learned is how much I spam the I need healing voice line on death in the original game. Which is pretty much whenever I died after feeding like a maniac. Long story short, yes, your support knows that healing must be delivered your way. Spamming them to do so, especially when you're dead, is tempting, but try harder to resist. Pinging anything and everything. Ever since shooters introduced the pinging system, competitive FPS titles have seen a small revolution of sorts. Suddenly, you don't have to hop on a mic or select voice commands. Simply ping at something and the information is relayed to your team. Of course, it's easy to get a little overzealous and just ping everything for the sake of pinging. It's fun in its own way, but etiquette and not overloading your team with useless information is key. Chasing the meta. If playing ethically sits on the end of the gameplay spectrum, then chasing the meta is on the extreme opposite. This involves going for the most effective tactics available, whether it's an action RPG looter that depends specific gear and min-maxing, using the best weapons and heroes in online matches, and so on. Again, it's hard to not go for all of this if it helps in winning, but sometimes it's better to just play what you want and have fun. Cheats and Exploits There's playing ethically, and chasing the meta, and then there are cheats. Cheating online via hacks is wrong and should be punished. But finding an in-game cheat that lets you go absolutely insane with invulnerability, infinite ammo, all weapons unlocked, and so on and so forth, that's pretty tough to resist. After all, it's nice to just cut loose every once in a while, especially in an open world game like Grand Theft Auto. Did you know that we at Gaming Bolt upload new videos every day? Stick around, drop a like, subscribe, and let us know what kind of content you'd like to see in the future with a comment below.